So in this video, I'm going to break down how Spotify has been able to use network science to set themselves up as the biggest player in the music streaming business, having almost one third of the whole market share and more than half a billion monthly active users. Spotify has built its reputation around his recommendation algorithm, which is the system that serves you suggested song for you to listen to and discover new music in the process. And the way they do this is with advanced machine learning on the data they get from the user base, but there is also a lot of network science involved. And this is necessary because artificial intelligence can help you distinguishing between music genres and recognizing rhythmic patterns, but cannot capture more volatile aspects, like the emotions that we feel when we're listening to a song. To do that, you need to ask other humans and study their behavior and then you can use that behavior to make your prediction. And this is why, at the very core of the Spotify recommendation system, there is a network, a social network, to be precise. The first thing we note is that, like most complex algorithm, the Spotify recommendation system is not a single huge piece of code, but instead, it's made up by different systems each dealing with different aspects or different phases of the process. The big distinction is between content-based filters and collaborative algorithms. The former use metadata or your signal analysis and takes care of any other element that is embedded into the song file, the elements that are intrinsic in the song, if you wish. On the other hand, the collaborative algorithm uses all the external information. How many times the song have been listened to, how many people with similar music taste have streamed it, which playlist the song has been added to, and so on and so forth. Those are the two big systems, and each one of them is made up by several subsystems that use many different techniques and listen to many different signals. Now, I believe that the area in which Spotify has been able to create real differentiation from its competitors is the collaborative side of things which is also the one in which the network science aspect is more pronounced. And I have two main reasons for this. First, claiming that Spotify can do better machine learning than its competitors, which, remember, include the likes of Apple, Amazon, and even Google through YouTube Music, is just unrealistic. In fact, not only Spotify would need better machine learning models, but better to a degree that would allow them to gain more than double the market share of its closest competitors. To me, that's just completely unrealistic, and if it was true, with such a refined degree of machine learning, Spotify would have already become an all-encompassing company, and basically could have taken up the world. Instead, they are still focusing on music and a few related stuff, like podcast. So, that suggests to me that their key differentiator is something that is not easily generalizable to other industries. And that brings us back to the power of the community-based recommendation system, and the second reason why I believe that is really the driving differentiator behind Spotify's success. This is all anecdotal evidence, but as an Apple Music user myself, the most common comment I get about Spotify from those who use it is how good it is at suggesting them songs that they didn't know, but they really like. This is called generalizing, and there are a few good reasons why this might be the symptom of a very good social network algorithm at work. So now, Let's have a look at both parts of the recommendation system with a particular focus on the community-based approach. So the general idea behind the content-based algorithm is to describe the songs by examining their own content. This powers the low-level features like the search function, but it's also used in the recommendation system. Spotify relies on metadata such as title, artist name, album, songwriter, and many, many more to bridge the gap between what users listen to and what they haven't listened to but could potentially like. This is the most basic step. If you often listen to, I don't know, Lady Gaga or The Beatles, you are going to see more songs of those artists in your suggestion feed. So far, so good. But of course, people don't necessarily like all the songs from an artist or a given album and sometimes they're looking more for a mood rather than a specific singer. And this is where audio analysis kicks in. As soon as the audio file of a song is uploaded into Spotify's database, the audio wave is analyzed and scored against different metrics. 
This is called signal processing, and it's basically a field of its own. But for the purpose of our analysis, all we need to know is that Spotify has acknowledged a list of 12 parameters they use to score songs. They include the sort of liveliness, measuring whether it's a live or studio track, energy, a measure of intensity and activity, and danceability, how suitable the track is for dancing, just as a few examples. Using those information, they can compile thematic playlists that help users finding new music when they search for a specific mood, like a relaxing song or a party playlist. But this is still mostly outside of the recommendation feed, and crucially, something that other competitors have been able to replicate as well. For example, all the features and playlists that I've mentioned so far are also available on Apple Music. So, once again, Spotify isn't playing in a league of its own here. Where they do play in a league of their own, however, it's in their social recommendation system. This is where the Spotify recommendation system really gets interesting, and it's also where networks come into play. The idea here is to record all the listening patterns of different users, compare the behaviors across those who commonly listen to the same songs, and group them together. Then, if one of them also listens to a new song, it's a good indication that the other users in the group might like that song as well. It's a brilliant system that is able to capture the human connection with music, mostly because it has literal humans to work as judges on what feelings a specific song elicit in its listeners. To do this, once the algorithm has grouped users that normally listen to similar songs, it checks for streamings of songs that are not in the frequently played list for the group. If a user has enjoyed songs A, B and C, for example, and the other has enjoyed songs A and B but hasn't heard C yet, it recommends song C to the latter. Of course, that was the most bare-bones example, so let's try something a little bit more sophisticated to see what's really going on and how network science can help this process. Let's say, for example, that a group of four listeners, labeled 1 to 4, have been observed to have a high listening count on the same group of 10 songs, A to J. Different users will have listened to different songs, and not all songs have been listened by all users. Let's model this situation as a bipartite graph of songs and listeners, with each person connected to all the songs they have already listened to. Now, we try to complete the graph. In a sense, if these people had the exact same music taste, this representation would become the complete bipartite graph K104. But this is an idealized scenario, so let's only consider the safest guesses. For example, song B has been listened to by everyone except person 3, so that's a sensible suggestion. The same is true for a few more combinations, like person 2 and songs E and G, or person 3 and songs B and J. Let's also highlight a couple of things here. If you are someone who organically likes to try out new music, you are less likely to need good suggestions, because you will seek out new content on your own regardless. In our example, this explorer role would be played by person number 4, who has the highest number of connections and, indeed, receives no suggestion. That is to say, the algorithm used the most curious people as explorers and relay their choices to the others, the followers. In addition, popular songs are rewarded the most, as we can see from the fact that all suggestions in our example had been listened to by at least three of the four people already. In other words, while explorers do the heavy lifting in the research phase, it's the collective validation of the followers that pushes the recommendation through the algorithm. Two caveats on this process. Firstly, this is a simplified example, and Spotify will use millions of such networks, with the same user belonging to several dozens and possibly even several hundreds of them. This way, nobody is a pure explorer or a pure follower, and nobody is left without any personalized suggestion. And secondly, consumption-based recommendations suffer a popularity problem. Artists like ACDC and Madonna probably have a lot of shared listeners, but that's a byproduct of their popularity, and not of their similarity. Content-based filtering, the one we have talked about in the first half of this video, can swoop back through the window to mitigate this problem. But the new trend is to use playlist analysis instead. This is a much stronger indication that two songs belong in the same network. 
If many users include two songs in the same playlist, that is a very strong indication that those two songs share the same musical mood, musical taste or atmosphere. Once both parts of the recommendation algorithm have produced a list of the best songs, they are scored against each other and offered to the user. This way, new music is discovered and appreciated, users are kept happy and Spotify retains its position as a leader of the music streaming industry. All of this thanks to network science. I work on network science full time for my PhD and I've already made quite a few videos on its real world applications. So if you're interested in these topics, you should take a look at this video here in which I explain how Google works and how it's able to quickly recognize the best and most authoritative sources for every search you perform. Also using networks, of course. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this coming out twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. Until next Wednesday, goodbye.